Hello guys, welcome back to another video. It's so good to be back. So today in this video, we will be discussing about rectangular patch antennas. So what do you mean by rectangular patch antennas? Well, let's find out. So a rectangular patch antenna, just like the name suggests, it is a rectangular patch. That is, it is in the shape of a rectangle. So this rectangular patch is actually a metallical patch and this metallic patch is placed on a dielectric substrate so how is that well let's see so for that first let us consider a particular dielectrical substrate like this let this be a particular dielectric substrate then if this is a dielectric substrate then we place a rectangular metallic patch on top of this dielectric substrate like this So this rectangular patch is placed on this material which is a dielectric material. So then this simply is a rectangular patch antenna where a metallical patch antenna is placed on top of a dielectric medium. So here in order to power this metallical patch we provide a particular transmission line like this. So this transmission line powers this particular metallic Patch. So now once this metallical patch is powered with the help of this transmission line then we observe an electric field like this on both the directions. This is the basic principle behind a rectangular patch antenna. So here the length of this particular rectangular patch antenna is taken as L. And this is the width of this particular rectangular patch antenna. And this particular dielectric material has got a dielectric constant as epsilon r. Now, this dielectric material is actually placed on a metallical ground. So in order to see that, let us now draw the side view of a rectangular patch antenna. So when we draw the side view of a rectangular patch antenna, first we can see a huge dielectric material like this. And on top of this here, we will have the rectangular patch which is actually placed. And in order to power this rectangular patch antenna, we provide a transmission line like this. And below this dielectric material is a metallic ground plane. That is, on top of this metallic ground plane, we place this dielectric material. So I have marked it. This is the metallic patch antenna. This is the transmission line towards the metallic patch antenna. This is the dielectric material and this is the ground plane. So now here, in order to provide impedance matching to this particular metallic patch antenna, what we do is this particular transmission line is changed like this. That is the position of this transmission line is changed along the width of this particular transmission antenna. So once we change the position of this transmission line along the width of this antenna, we obtain impedance matching and plus the impedance matching also depends on this particular width of this patch antenna. That is, by changing the width of this patch antenna, we can obtain impedance matching. So, if you observe this diagram carefully, you guys can observe one thing. The one thing you guys can observe is that the electric field flows only along the width of this patch antenna. There is no field towards the length. That is, there is no field like this or there is no field like this. The electric field flows only through the width of this particular antenna. So if you view it from the side view, the electric field would be flowing like this. This is the path through which this particular field flows from this particular metallic patch antenna. And so here, let us take this as the height of the dielectric material. So therefore, as the height increases, the radiation of this particular antenna increases. But the radiation increases only till a particular limit value. That is, once the height reaches a particular limit value and then it is increased further, then the radiation won't happen. So that limit value is given as h is less than 0 0.05 lambda. So in the case of a rectangular patch antenna, the length is usually taken as lambda by 2. So here therefore what you can observe is with the increase in the width of this rectangular patch antenna the radiation also increases. 
So therefore here the operation frequency of this particular antenna is given as FO is equal to C divided by 2L into root of epsilon effective where epsilon effective is the effective dielectric constant. Why do we take the effective dielectric constant? Because when we observe here the electric field first flows through air and then it passes through this dielectric material and then it moves downward. So it moves through a lot of things. So therefore the effective dielectric constant must be taken when we take the operating frequency of this particular patch antenna. So here C is the velocity of light, L is the length of this particular patch antenna which is present here and epsilon effective is the effective dielectric constant. So I have written down whatever we just discussed. So a rectangular patch antenna, it is a metallical patch placed on a dielectric material and supported by a ground plane. That is what we saw. So here in the case of a rectangular patch antenna, its major advantage is the fact that it can be fabricated using photolithographic techniques. So it is an antenna fabricated using photolithographic techniques on a PCB or a printed circuit board. So that is a major advantage of using a rectangular patch antenna. So therefore, it's the most widely used antenna as the installation of this antenna is very easy due to its very low size, very low cost and very low weight. Because it is very small and it weighs very less and because it is very cost effective, that is it is very cheap. Because of that, it is the most widely used antenna. So here, the impedance matching is provided to the metallical patch antenna by varying the position of the transmission line, just like we saw now. Here, the radiation increases with an increase in the width of the particular rectangular patch. And the impedance matching also depends on the width W. This particular rectangular patch, it radiates in the side of W and not in the side of the length. Here, the length L is usually taken as lambda by 2. And as the height of the dielectric medium, which is H, as it increases, the radiation also increases, but till a limit value. And that limit value is given as H less than 0 0.05 lambda, that is 0 0.05 of the wavelength. So here the operating frequency is given as F0 is equal to C divided by 2L root of epsilon effective, where epsilon effective is the effective dielectric constant. So now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using a rectangular patch antenna? Well, let's find out. So now, the major advantage of using a rectangular patch antenna is its size. That is, it can be fabricated on a PCB and hence it has got very small size. The cost is very low. The weight is very low and it is easy to fabricate. It can be easily printed on a circuit board. So these are the advantages. These are obvious advantages after seeing whatever we saw right now. These are the obvious advantages of using a rectangular patch antenna. But now the disadvantages of using a rectangular patch antenna is the fact that it has got a lower efficiency. The power is comparatively low and it has got a high Q factor. So these are the disadvantages. Now the applications that is where all this particular rectangular patch antenna is used. It is used in aircraft, it is used in mobile phones, it is used in satellites and it is also used in missiles. So I'll give you a small recap here. In the earlier mobile phones we used to see the antenna popping out of the mobile phones but now a mobile phone is just a rectangular thing that we have in our hands. So that is because we're using this a rectangular patch antenna which is actually a printed circuit board which is placed inside the mobile phone and hence the antenna has disappeared. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you mean by a rectangular patch antenna. So we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.